Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Okay, today we're going to do topic 7B. Okay, we're done with uh, topic 7A. In which we did the aggregate planning, uh, MPS and also MRP. So now we're going into job scheduling. So we will learn there's a three um, calculation that you need to know. The first one is on the priority rules and then on the critical ratio and also on the Johnson rules. Okay. So job scheduling is uh, is uh, is method. Okay. On how to to arrange your job sequence. Okay. It depends on the uh, rules that you are going to apply, and it depends on the number of machine. Okay. How many jobs so that you can save uh, cost as much as possible and also increase the productivity. Because if we don't uh, do scheduling. It will cause bottleneck. Okay. What is bottleneck? Bottleneck is when we have constraint. Okay, kita ada masalah. Let's say, for example, we we look at this. Uh, there's one machine that make all the other job a uh, queue. Okay, uh, because mungkin uh, machine E ini process dia terlalu slow atau that's the only machine that handle for that process. And how to overcome this? Maybe by having another machine. Okay, to help machine E to do the job okay so you need to make sure that there's no bottleneck in the process if not it can cost lots of time resources and you will bear lots of cost okay so cara-cara dia uh, maybe you have uh, alternative uh, routes okay you have another machine another line to compensate the uh, queue and for manufacturing and service it's different Okay, in doing uh, scheduling. And we know that in service, we only deal with staff. Okay, and seldom or jarang ada inventory dalam service. But in manufacturing, yes, it's very important. In which it involves the machine, material, manpower. Okay, all of these are related. And for services, they have different kind of uh, issues during the scheduling. Okay, first we look at the first rules is the priority rules. Okay, priority rules are the tig. Oh, sorry, ada empat. In which the common one is the first come first serve. Okay, first come first serve is more proper for service. Okay, let's say you you go to uh, queuing for food. Let's say you go to McDonald's. They are can serve the first one in the row. Okay, the first one at the queue. So it's more fair lah because you datang dulu, they serve you first. But for manufacturing, it's different. Sometimes first come, first serve is not the best option. Maybe you have to do shortest processing time. And then sometimes you have to consider the due date and so on. So these are the four uh, type of priority rules that use in the manufacturing. So what is the criteria that they look when they want to choose which one is the best rule? So first they look at the average completion time, utilization, and then also is, is there any job lateness if a due date is very important for your industry? Okay. So let's look at this example. Okay. They have lima job, five job, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, and these are the processing time okay for each job so in, in days okay so this is maybe a long process eh? so job a next six days to complete job b two days job three eight days and so on and these are the due date in which that uh, from the order when is the due date so this one is on the day eight okay so you need at day six and so on so when we look at the job due date sometimes uh, it's not critical for your uh, manufacturing. So, we look at this, uh, usually three, okay, these three common uh, rules that use, okay. okay. Let's look at the first one, first come, first serve. So, the sequence going to be A, B, C, D, E, okay. It, it's uh, following the job arrival. So, A, B, C, D, E, and then these are the processing time. So, we add up, sum all the processing time. And then, we need to do for the flow time. Okay, how to do the flow time, okay? So, the flow time is, we start with the first one. Okay, 0 plus 6, we have 6. And then, 6 plus 2, we have 8. 8 plus 8, we have 16. 16 plus 3, we have 19. And 19 plus 10, we have 28. 
Okay, when you finish up the flow time, then you do the sum. And then these are the job due date from the earlier table. So now we want to know the job lateness. So how to do it? We need to compare between the flow time and the job due date. So the flow time, it means that it's finished at, at uh, day 6 and the due date is day 8. So are you late? No, we are not late because we have two days buffer. Okay, this one, we start to have problem. The flow time, we finish at 8 for job B. But the due date supposed to be at day 6. So what happened? We are late how many days? We are late 2 days. Okay. And then for this one also, we uh, we look. This one we finish at 16 but we the due date on the day 18. So okay, we are safe here. Not late. And this one, uh, we finish at 19. Okay, oops, the due date is supposed to be on a day 15, so we already late for 4 days. And the final one, oh, okay, this one is, we've, we finish at 28, day 28, but the due date is on the 23rd. So what happened? We, did, we late by 5 days, okay? So now we total up the job lateness. So how many? We have 11, okay? So... From this information that we done just now, we need to do the calculation for the average completion time. The formula is sum of total flow time, 77, divided by number of job, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 15.4 days. For utilization, the, the formula is total job working time. It's uh, this one, okay? So you add up, we have 28. Sum of the total flow time, we have 77. And we and then we times with hundred we have thirty six point four percent of utilization. Now we look at the average job lateness. So we have eleven. How many job we have? Five. So we have two point two days. So this information we're going to compare with all other rules. Okay, next let's do for the next rule SPT short processing time. So we need to uh, do the sequence first. So the se sequence for SPT is to look at the processing time. So we will go with the lowest or the minimum processing time in which B and then followed by D and then A and then the last and then C 8 and then the maximum one is 9. So the sequence for SPT is B, D, A, C, E. So once we have this sequence, we need to do the table by having B, D, A, C, E here. So we need to put the uh, processing time based on this information. So B, we have 2. So 2. D, we have 3. So D, 3 and so on based on B, D, A, C, E. Then you sum this one first. Then you do the flow time. Remember how to do flow time? To 0 plus 2. 2 and then 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 6 11 11 plus 8 19 19 plus 9 is 28 so sum all of this we got 65 and then these are the due date based on this one so b is 6 okay d 15 okay and then we have a a is 8 so we have to follow the due date Okay, once we have the due date, then we want to know whether it's late or not. The first one finish at day 2, due date is 6. So, okay, we are not late. So, we have no late. Finish at 5, due date is 15. Okay, good, no late. Finish at 11, due date, day 8. Oh, we already late here. So, how many? 3 day. Okay, and then 19, Flow, uh, we finish, but the due date supposed to be day 18. Oops, we have one day late. And then for this one, okay, we lots of late. We finish at 28, but the due date supposed to be on 23rd day. And we late how many days? 5 days. So we need to sum up all the job lateness. We get 9. Again, we need to do the calculation for the average completion time. We look at the sum of the total. Uh, flow time 65, number of job same 5, so we get 13 days. Utilization, total of job time 
it's 28 divided by sum of total flow time 65 so we get 43.1 percent and then average job lateness is the total lateness 9 divided by 5 number of job we get 1.8 so we will compare it with the fcfs just now and then the last uh rules that we're going to do edd okay it means that earliest due date so we are looking at the due date here so we will uh, arrange by the due date so which one is the first one is b and then followed by a and then we have d and then we have c and then we have e so b a d c e so we're going to put here on the job sequence and just uh, follow the job uh, processing time and also you have to put the due date based on the each job here okay now we're going to do the flow time remember 0 plus 2 2 2 plus 6 8 8 plus 3 11 11 plus 8 is 19 19 plus 9 is 28 again sum of the processing time sum of the flow time and then we will like we will check on the job lateness the first one we finish at 2 due at 6 so no late finish at 8 due date 8 so on the dot so we have no late finish at 11 due date on 15 so we not late okay now we start to have late so finish at 19 supposed to due on 18 so we have one day late and then finish at 28 due date on 23rd so we late five days so sum up all the job lateness we got six okay now we're going to do the calculation average completion time so we take the sum of the flow time divided by 28 we got 13.6 days utilization we have 28 divided by 68 we have 41.2 percent and the lateness we have total of six divided by five job we have 1.2 days okay now we have do okay for the lpt we're going to skip that okay because it's uh, Never be the best choice. So we will compare between FCFS, SPT and EDD. So just now we calculate all the average completion days, utilization and job lateness average. So we can see that on the average completion, the best is SPT. Okay. For lowest average completion time, SPT is the best option because they give you 13 days. Okay, for utilization, the best one is also SPT because it gives the highest utilization. So, the highest is the better, 43.1%. And for the job lateness, we want the shortest as possible. So, this one is the best one is EDD, earliest due date rules in which give the best, lowest average lateness in which 1.2 days. Okay, so you have seen how to compare the rules and get the best. Uh, solution and co comparison of sequence is depend on the on the situation okay for service maybe you need to go for fcfs for manufacturing sometimes you go for spt and if uh, there's a, a critical point on the due date maybe they will have penalty for due date maybe you go for the edd okay depends on your uh, what we call it the priority okay next we're going to do critical ratio